All right, here we go. Home stretch. You gave yourself to us. You made the choice of your own free will. We were the only ones who cared. The ones who took you from your useless life. We gave you a reason to exist. And how do you thank us? By destroying our work? Where will you go when you leave us, kid? Who will have you? Why would you... Hmm. Uh... <laughs> this ends here. You sure about that? Oh, it's one of those. All right, so I have to avoid the bodies, I'm guessing. Where am I? I am so confused. anymore. I'll enter the system and my return will be proof that all of this was worth it. I can of course convince them that it wasn't for me. It was for their goals. There are just the final tweaks left. Once I finish I will put Leslie in the stem with myself and activate it. The wireless signal should ring out in the near distance. I can't speak for those unfortunate to be around. But like I always said, the ends will justify the means. Finally, Mobius will see that I am one of their chosen ones. Reuben is but a ghost. I am their savior. Their plan is nothing without me. All right, it looks like there's no bodies in this room. And honestly, I don't know if this is really, or if this really even matters what I'm doing. Like, if I really actually need to avoid anybody, but... Just being cautious. More ammo right over there. Okay, don't need it, I guess. Really? Six shells, that's all I need. Can't hold on to a few more in my pocket? Alright. Sounds like bullshit. I get whatever. Oh, shit. Damn it. All right, here we go. Oh, fuck. Bye. Ah, I could have gotten that, those shells. That's too bad. You won't answer our questions. Is it out of fear? Fear is such a subtle thing. But when one experiences true fear, is when they can be controlled. They can be molded. STEM is an abortion, a machine designed on the premise of fear. But in a sense, it is perfect for what we hope to achieve. You will be the first. You will bow under this fear, or you will die. He's gonna be inside. You will serve as an example for what we will become.
Hey, Leslie, what are you doing? Wait. Don't go in there. Sebastian, get away from him. Sebastian, listen to me. Stop. Your interests are the same as ours. Look, I get it. You're not just some rookie detective, and this is not just some ordinary kid. You killed Joseph and you shot me. So right at this moment, that's enough reason for me not to trust you. You're a good man. That's why I... It doesn't matter anymore. If you know who this kid is, if you know anything, you know why he can't be allowed to live. Bullshit. It's Ruvik. He's the one that... It... None of this is real. You aren't real. You want to believe that, but I'm right here. I've been with you this whole time. This world is a nightmare. But I'm not afraid of you anymore. That just shows how little you understand. You should be very afraid. We have you, kid. And you know the consequences for failure. We won't let you just leave us. You fulfilled what little use you have. This world is a prison for you to run in. Fuck you. I've had enough of this. I'll kill you right here. Shit. Christ. Fuck. Are you kidding me? Oh, all right. I thought that was something more important. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> All right, maybe not. Oh, that 
doesn't look fun. Oh, Jesus Christ! I don't like that. I fucking hate when it when games do that kind of thing. When they run at you like that. And it's all staticky and shit. I despise when games do that. It scares the fuck out of me. Dead Space did that too. Oh, God damn it! Run, 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 run. Where the fuck do I go? Great. Did I get one? <laughs> okay. Now what? It's a shame you'll never see what we accomplished. Okay, th this is cover. Quite obviously, this is supposed to be cover. Ah, this is not good. I'm stronger than you think. Are you sure enough in yourself? 
sure enough to face the responsibilities of your actions. Agent Kidman, we've got him from here. How long has it been? 37 minutes since the first pulse. How did we get here? What are you talking about? Uh, just give me a minute. I need to get Myra. my head straight. Myra, we need you back here. All right, but we've got word he wants a debriefing as soon as you get back. to the real world, Sebastian. I hope you find what you're looking for. Leave that one. And those two. They're not going anywhere. No one is. All right, well, that was The Evil Within, The Consequence, and I'm pretty sure this music right here is copyrighted, so you're probably not hearing it. Ha! Huh. I don't know how I feel about this story. My, my interpretation of the overall narrative up into the very last, like, five minutes right there was that the whole point was Julie Kidman is the real hero of this story, and that... Uh, Sebastian is really just off in his own little world doing all this bullshit, and he thinks he's the hero, but in all reality, that's not the case. But yeah, it's Kidman who's really doing all the work, um, and, and doing all the things that actually affect the outside world, which I think is interesting. I could be completely wrong, and everything I'm saying is bullshit, but it's just, I don't know, a lot of the story feels kind of convoluted and, like, it's unnecessarily complicated. Uh, so it's really hard for me to say whether or not this is a good story or if it's a bad one, um, that's just, you know, has too many, uh, nonsensical and unnecessary layers to it, um, that, you know, don't, just don't really need to be there. It's really hard for me to decipher that. And that last few minutes, it's really hard for me to be able to be sure whether or not any of the stuff that Kidman was doing was even real. Um, obviously it was within the machine, but my point is, is that the antagonist of um, of, uh, the main game and, you know, this DLC, they're both supposedly real. Ruvik is supposed to be real, and it seems like the suit is real, but Ruvik is less tangible, you know, because Ruben is the actual guy, and Ruvik is this sort of, um, alternate persona within the game itself, um, or within the, uh, machine, I should say, that controls everything around you. Uh, Whereas the suit seems to be the one that's giving Kidman the assignment, and she he apparently came in with her due to the chemical that she was given. The thing is, is that when we were brought out by that other agent, I can't remember, I think her name was Mira or whatever, there was no issue. Like, they didn't have any problems with me whatsoever, so it makes me wonder as to whether or not the suit is even real. Um, and it makes me question as to whether or not anybody, anything that anybody did in the entire game actually meant anything so maybe this is due to my own ignorance of certain parts of the parts of the story and i just wasn't paying attention enough 
Uh, but it just feels as though a lot of this is fake. And it's really hard for me to de to decipher what re what is real and what isn't. And, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. Uh, if my initial hypothesis of Kidman being the actual protagonist and Sebastian just being kind of this dude who isn't really uh, effective in any sense and he's just being an action hero and trying to, um, you know, make a difference when he really isn't, and Kidman's the real hero, if that's actually the case, that's actually pretty interesting, and, and it's, I would argue it's probably even more interesting that a story writer would think to do something like that, um, you know, especially considering that far less people are going to play the DLC than they are going to play the main game. I just seriously doubt that that is the actual motivation. I seriously doubt it. I, I, I think that it's far more likely that the writers of this story just aren't very... <laughs> they just didn't really think things through. And so they just have all this shit, like, just, cl like, cluttered throughout the entire script. And I, I don't... Like I said, I don't know whether I want to say this is a good story or a bad one. It's it's really hard for me to say. Um, But regardless of the story, regardless of all of that... Um, I thought, in general, this DLC was actually really cool, and I thought it was really interesting. Um, I liked the first part way more. I liked the assignment more than I liked the consequence, in all honesty. Like, the assignment just feels like it has less to it. But, at the same time, the reason why I enjoyed this, the assignment more is because I played it first. I think that's what it comes down to. Um, because a lot of the antagonists and a lot of the villain or not villains, but, but, uh, like, adversaries of the, of the first part, they didn't really change that up in the second part. It was pretty much the same things, like those crawlies that can only hear you, they can't see you, and they blow up. The, um, light head, you know, characters, or not characters, I want to call them characters, but just, um, uh, creatures like that, you know, they were also in the consequence, so... I found myself getting kind of annoyed, especially getting close to the end with with the uh, with the consequence because it was like I'm just doing the sh same shit over and over. It's just go to this stage, do the same thing you did earlier. Go to this stage, do the same thing you did earlier. There was very little difference in between the consequence and the assignment. It was hard to differentiate um, much of anything between the two. Um, the only real difference I found in the consequence between the assignment is that you got to shoot your gun, which I think is cool, and I think that that's okay. I don't mind them doing that. Um, the, the thing I always found to be acceptable in a survival horror of any sort, um, first of all, to clarify, my, in my opinion, the best type of survival horror is one where you don't have weapons. Like, that really amps up the scare factor, because you're helpless. You don't have a way of being able to get out of this situation, um, other than using your wits. You have to be smart, you have to be crafty, you have to be clever, because you can't just brute force the fuck out of this, this adversary in front of you. You have to be smarter than it, and you have to get around it. Um, which is why I think, in the end, I actually appreciate this DLC more than I appreciate the main game. But otherwise, um, what I was going to say is what I find more accept what I find acceptable about using weapons in those types of games is when you do it at the end. I made a point, I think, in Alien that um, I felt like the flamethrower was used too often because um, you know the game is so long, and so what you, like about at the halfway point you get the flamethrower, and it's just like <laughs> I'm no longer afraid of the alien because I have this this uh, weapon to be able to ward it off. And that just felt like it took away a lot of the scare. And I'm, But the thing is, I'm okay with the flamethrower. I'm okay with the pistol in this game. And the shotgun, when it's if it's used at, like, the final, like, you know, quarter of the game or um, final fifth of the game where you're in the home stretch because it's like, okay, you, there's nothing really extra that you can add on by the end because it just seems kind of... Um, poorly done in terms of pacing you've got you've established everything at this point so there's nothing in terms of variety that can scare you so in order to add variety to it you can incorporate action you can or incorporate a weapon um to kind of uh keep the interest of the consumer you know the you know the player the person who plays the game 
So I'm okay with adding the pistol, and I feel like they did it well in this DLC. They didn't give it to you too often. You only had the weapon twice, I believe. You had the, pi uh, I mean, you had the unloaded pistol at one point, but you had the pistol in that little construction section, and then um, uh, when you killed Lighthead at, uh, in Chapter Three. It was at the end of Chapter Three, and then you get the shotgun at the very end. Um, and that was like the home stretch. That was like the very final point. And it's like all the rules that were established earlier, they're thrown out the window. And I find that to be okay. Um, in terms of whether or not I enjoyed this game more than I enjoyed the original Evil Within, it's hard to say. Because I, the thing I find funny is that I feel like the strongest point of the Evil Within, the main game, was its gunplay. Um, not that it's particularly amazing or anything, but I found the most satisfying part of that game was when you would get that critical hit. You would get that headshot, and you would just see the head explode, and it was just like, ah, oh, that's a fucking great feeling. And for like 95% of this game, the DLC between the two, you didn't have that. They were like, yeah, you remember the strongest part of the game, at least in my opinion? Yeah, fuck that. Fuck all that. We're throwing that out the window. So it's like you're taking a real risk. Um, throwing out the best part of your game and somehow it still worked. Um, I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend that the assignment and the uh, consequence are like masterpieces. They're not. There's still a lot of problems with them. Um, they were repetitive and they were clunky as fuck. Uh, that, that's the problem with the whole entire Evil Within thing, like the game and the DLC is that the controls are clunky and that's its biggest knock, especially for a stealth game. You need to have crisp and clean controls if you want to make a stealth game because if you don't the player is going to get frustrated very easily because you know Alex from Gameworks uh, if you've seen him on the channel I remember him making a point about Dark Souls once is that he finds Dark Souls to be interesting because um, uh, the thing about player difficulty is that uh, you know a player is going to keep playing a game as long as they feel like it's their fault and not the game's and the thing about The Evil Within is that most of the time when I died, I felt like it was the game's fault. It wasn't mine. It was the game and its shitty handling and its poor controls. And that was the part that frustrated me the most about this game was its controls. And the fact that it has to be so reliant on its controls given that you're moving so much and you're not relying on gunplay. You, if you're going to rely on movement, you need to make sure that the fucking movement is crisp. And it wasn't. And so that was its biggest knock. And that, like... In terms of, like, uh, point scoring, that takes off an uh, automatic, like, two or three points right there. Like, it, it's something that's so reliant, you need to make sure that it's it's well, um, well constructed. And I look at the story itself, and because I can't really dictate as to whether or not it's a, just a convoluted mess, or if it's a really ballsy, interesting way of writing a story, because I can't really tell which one it is... I'm not going to judge the story. I'm not going to say because I think it's up to the pl uh, the player's interpretation as to how they want to look at the story. I know that's kind of a cop-out, but I think it's the only real way you can tell without getting the confirmation from the actual writer himself. Um, so I'm basing this completely on gameplay. And because of that, if I were to give a score, I would say it's like a 6.5, 7.5 of 10, which is roughly what I would give the main game itself. Uh, funny enough. Um, I feel like... It, the thing is, is that... I, I feel like this DLC's 6.5 to 7 out of 10... Is much stronger than the main game 6.5 to 7 out of 10. I don't know why exactly. I just do. I appreciated this game more. That's the key thing. Is that I respect this game more than I respect the main game. Felt like the main game was just... A bunch of action nonsensical bullshit. And it was just like... Look at all this blood. And it's just silly and ridiculous and maybe that's part of its charm it's hard to say you know because it's like when you throw so much blood out there and you throw so many things that are like supposed to be scary it's like none of it actually is scary or most of it isn't actually scary there's a few parts that were but overall the game just seems kind of silly and once again it's it's hard to interpret it's like is it intentional or is it not there's so much about this game that really interests me. Like, The Evil Within really is an interesting concept. Not the actual story or the game itself, but what's behind it. The intentions of the game. Is it intentionally silly? Is it sort of a parody of 
Shinji Mikami's previous works? Is it is it a parody of these types of games, or is it just another one of these types of games? And uh, you know, it's like which one can you really say it is? And it's hard to tell because it's so over the top and it's so ridiculous. Um, but nonetheless, I had fun doing it, <laughs> and maybe I'm going way too in depth, and maybe I'm just being way out there with how my interpretations of this game. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this series, and uh, I'll be sure to um, find something new relatively soon. You can look forward to a horror playthrough in the near future. I'm not going to say what it is, uh, because I, it's supposed to be a Tricom. I'm not going to say what it is, but it is of this sort of um, ilk, at least in terms of it being a third-person horror. I'll, get, I'll say that much. Um, the hope is that the Tricom group can get together and do it. But due to scheduling things, I can't promise it. And that's why I'm not going to say the name of the game just yet. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, once again, hope you guys enjoyed the series. And if you did, please be sure to like and subscribe and all that. And I will see you guys next time. Oh, God. Yeah, there you are. Can't say I'm surprised by that. Oh, great. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, God, it's right behind me. Fuck.